Good evening or morning, wherever you are. Um, this is the first of a number of lectures on eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Um, this, there are going to be a lot of concepts, a lot of new ideas here, also a lot of computational methods. Uh, so let's, but let's just get started with a little toy problem to lead into what eigenvalues and eigenvectors are. So in a certain club, a member recruits a new member every year, starting in his or her second year. So in his first year in the club, he does not recruit anyone. No one ever leaves the club. Starting with one member, how does the club grow? So here's our one starting member. He recruits a second member, sideways facing woman. In the next year, sideways facing woman becomes a senior experienced member of the club. So I'll draw the senior members in black and the new members in blue. She doesn't recruit anyone because it's still her first year, but a guy with a briefcase does. So the next year we have, you have two senior members and one junior member. In the year that follows that, the junior member is going to become senior. So there will be guy with a briefcase, sideways facing woman, and woman with hands on her hips. There'll be three people up here. And then there'll be two people down here recruited by the two senior members from the previous time. And it keeps going like that. Dancing guy and woman with a dress become senior. Briefcase guy, sideways facing woman and woman with her hands on her hips each recruit people. So now we have five senior members and three junior members. At the next round, we have eight senior members and five junior members and so forth. And so if you look at what happens going from one round to the next, the number of senior members at time n plus one is the number of senior members at time n plus the number of junior members at time n, because all the juniors from time n age into senior members, and the new number of junior members at time n plus one is the number of senior members at time n, because each senior member recruits a new junior member. So these five were recruited by the five who were senior in the previous time step. And here's that same equation written with matrices. So this up equation at the top of the page is just the equation at the bottom of the page with matrices. Here's a table of some data. Here's how the size of the club grows at time one, time two, times three, and so forth. And here it is plotted. The x-axis is the number of senior members. The y-axis is the number of junior members. If you've heard of Fibonacci numbers, these are the Fibonacci numbers. Fibonacci introduced them with a story about rabbits breeding. Um, my story is slightly less unrealistic than that one. And what I want you to notice in this picture is that all these vectors look like they're on a line. If you do the computation, you'll see they're not quite on a line. And we'll talk about why they're not quite on a line in later. But what I want you to see uh, now is that they really look like they're just about on a line and it really looks like their vector is multiplying by some scalar factor about one and a half each time. And so we're going to start by talking about when it is that a matrix has a vector such that multiplying the vector by the matrix just gives a scalar multiple of the same vector, which is the situation that looks like it's approximately happening here and by the end, we'll see what it is exactly if it is happening here. So let A be a square matrix. Suppose we have a vector V and a scalar lambda, so that AV equals lambda V. <sighs> Excuse me. So when that happens, we will say that V is an eigenvector of A, or we'll call it a lambda eigenvector if we want to say what lambda is. And if A has a non-zero lambda eigenvector, then we call lambda an eigenvalue of A. Oh, and a uh, little etymology note, uh, the prefix eigen 
is from German. And I don't speak German, but what I'm told is that eigen means something like self. So the idea is that this is a vector which turns into a multiple of itself when I multiply it by the matrix A. So here is a matrix which was chosen to make the numbers work out nicely. Uh, there's a trade-off in this area. It is almost impossible to both make a plausible word problem and make nice round numbers. So I started with a word problem about a club. Here's a matrix, and when we get to the numbers for that, we'll see they're not so nice. Here on the other hand is a matrix which has beautiful round numbers, but I would be very hard pressed to make a story about it. Anyways, so if I take this matrix A and I multiply it by the vector 5, 2, what I get is 15, 16 is 15, six. There's no, no mystery, nothing deep here. This is just matrix multiplication. You can check my arithmetic. And 15, six is three times five, two. So we say that the vector five, two is a three eigenvector. And similarly, if I take the vector three, one and multiply by that same matrix, I get six, two, which is two times three, one. So three, one is a two eigenvector. And we would say that the scalars three and two are eigenvalues of A. Now you might be wondering, how did I find these vectors? How did I find these values? They just seem pulled out of nowhere. And that's the topic of the next lecture. But for now, just imagine some little bird came and whispered in your ear, hey, try the vector five two. And you did and you found out, oh, hey, five two is an eigenvector. Then what can you do with that? Well, one thing that eigenvectors are really good for is problems which involve powers of matrices. So if V is a lambda eigenvector, excuse me, then A times the vector V is going to be the vector V times the scalar lambda. That's the definition of an eigenvector. And A squared times V is going to be A times lambda V. I can pull the scalar out, so it's going to be lambda times AV, that's going to be lambda squared V. And keep it going this way, A cubed V is going to be lambda cubed V, and A to the N V is going to be lambda to the N V. And we can also use this to analyze products of A to the N times other vectors, vectors which are linear combinations of eigenvectors. So suppose I have two eigenvectors, V1 and V2, and their eigenvalues are lambda 1 and lambda 2, and I have some vector w, which is a linear combination of v1 and v2, then a to the n times w is going to be a to the n times c1 v1 plus c2 v2. That's going to be c1 a to the n v1 plus c2 a to the n v2, and c1 a to the n v1 is c1 lambda 1 to the n v1 plus c2 lambda 2 to the n v2. And of course, the same thing works when I have more than two eigenvectors. So I get a nice formula for powers of A times things which are linear combinations of eigenvectors. Let's see what that looks like in the sense of a table if we actually do that with some numbers. So here's our matrix from the previous example. The eigenvectors are 5, 2, and 3, 1, and the corresponding eigenvalues are 3 and 2. Here's some vector W, which is V1 plus V2. It's 8 comma 3. Excuse me. Here's AW. So AW is A times V1, which is 3V1, plus A times V2, which is 2V2. If I take A squared W, I'm going to get 3 squared V1 plus 2 squared V2. And in general, A to the NW is going to be 3 to the NV1 plus 2 to the NV2. Let's see what happens if we plot this. Here's a plot of those points. 3, 1. Uh, 8, 3, 21, 8, 57, 22, and so forth. And what I want you to notice is the same sort of thing that we saw with the club. The vectors look like they're lying roughly on a line. And this time it looks like that line has a slope of two fifths. And they're multiplying by the same factor each time. This time the factor looks like about three. This is about three times longer than this. This is about three times longer than this. And you might notice that factor of three is this eigenvalue. 
And that two-fifth slope, that is this eigenvector. So why is this happening? It's happening because three to the n is much bigger than two to the n once n is at all large. Um, we've all heard lots and lots of talk about you know, the R value of diseases this year. The R value is what, what is the base of the exponential controlling how fast the disease grows. So if the R value is greater than one, it is growing. And, if, and the larger it is, the faster it is growing. So since three is larger than two, three to the n is gonna grow much larger than two to the n. So this vector a to the n w, which is three to the n times v1 plus two to the n times v2, this first term here, the three to the n v1 term is gonna be much larger than the two to the n v2 term once n gets it all large. And so a to the n w is nearly gonna be parallel to v1 and each time I multiply it by another power of a, I'm going to roughly multiply it by a factor of three because the dominant term is the one with the three eigenvector in it. And here's the general statement. If I have one eigenvalue, which is much larger than the others, or to be careful about it, if its absolute value is much larger than the other absolute values, and if w is a linear combination of the eigenvectors, then a to the n w will be roughly parallel to this largest eigenvector, once that is large. And each time we multiply a to the n w by a further power of a, we will roughly multiply it by the scale of lambda one. Okay, let's go back to our starting example now. This example has a nice story, but was going to have messy numbers. The eigenvalues, it's gonna turn out, one of them is gonna be about 1.62 and the other one's gonna be about negative 0.62. And the corresponding eigenvectors are, you see them on the screen. So since 1.62 is larger than negative 0.62, powers of my matrix times a vector are gonna be roughly parallel to the eigenvector associated with the larger eigenvalue. And each time we're gonna multiply by a factor of about 1.6. So in black is the data I showed you before, except it's more zoomed in in order to help you see clearer. But this is the size of the club. At first there's one senior member, no junior members, then one of each, then two senior and one junior, then three senior and two junior and so forth. That's what these black points are. What these red points are, are these red points exactly lie on a line. These red points are the vector v1, lambda 1, v1, lambda 2 squared, v1, and so forth. Just taking scalar multiples of lambda, just taking scalar multiples of v1 over and over, where the scalar multiple is growing exponentially with this 1.6 base. And you can see that they're spaced out in the same kind of way, and that once you get out into this part of the picture, the black dots look like on the same line as the red dots. So, here it is pictorially. No, the black dots don't exactly lie on a line, but they're really, really close to it because they're really, really close to growing like these red dots that do. So that's what, eigen, that's what eigenvectors and eigenvalues are. An eigenvector is a vector which, when you multiply it by A, becomes a scalar multiple of itself. And the eigenvalue is the scalar involved. And here's at least one place you see them you see them whenever you analyze taking powers of matrices and asking what happens after you take a lot of powers. Now, we haven't told you yet how you would ever actually compute any eigenvectors or eigenvalues. For that, please join me in the next video.